Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.3.1. In this video I'm going to test the B-58 Hustler that I modeled in Blender once again and hope that I can get it to Mach 2. I've made some tweaks to the configuration file and last time I was not able to bring it to Mach 2. I don't remember if I actually broke the sound barrier but I've made some changes and hopefully we can do it this time. Among those is it's underfueled, it's only half fueled right now. Uh, that's not ideal, but it's a start, you know, it'll uh, help it get off the ground and we'll go from there. And I'll talk about the other tweaks along the way. So, here we go. So, I mean, the engines are the correct engines. I can't do anything about that. And the mass of the plane is correct, so I can't do anything about that either. Um... Really all I could do was adjust the drag on the plane. At least we get off the ground. Whoa, it's a little bit wobbly though. I'm not sure why it's wobbly right now, but okay. Um, so I reduced the drag just by fiat, basically. I wrote it into the configuration so that it should have less drag. Let's uh, take it out of afterburner for now as we are getting to a higher altitude and I'll try and use atmospheric autopilot which is usually smoother yeah I mean all the other numbers being the right ones there were a limited number of things that I could do to fix it and just telling it to not have as much drag was I guess the best thing I could do it seemed to be the only option left to me. Not the ideal, but then again, I don't actually know how much drag it gets. I mean, I do not have a wind tunnel to put it through. Now, Far, Far is not happy with any of this. I'm not sure why Far doesn't like my wings. It doesn't. But I think it has something to do with the fact that basically this piece and this piece are different pieces. But, um, yeah, just the peculiarities of the flight data here, well, it doesn't make any sense. It's not telling me the right things about the flight data. I mean, certainly we do not have, I mean, we're going down right now, but in general we would not get negative lift, um, nor a negative uh, lift coefficient or anything like that. So it just doesn't make any sense. What I think is going on is because I have two different pieces for the wings. So there's a wing left and a wing right. Now in your normal um, Kerbal Space Program stuff, you will symmetrize the wings. You have one piece that's symmetrical on both sides, not like this. And I think it has to do with like the orientation of the wing pieces in Unity. And I just need to figure out what the correct orientation is. A lot of things in Unity you have to put in the right orientation for it to work like control surfaces and fairings so I suspect that that's the situation it's just that when I put these things in unity they weren't in the right orientation for far to get a proper reading off of it I don't know that's just a hypothesis and it's the best I've got right now so otherwise I have no idea what's going on but all I know is when I tried to add the far modules to uh, things with my own wings it veered off to one side. So the control surfaces are B9 procedural control surfaces, so they're the normal things. The vertical stabilizer is mine, of course. Okay, we are at a decent altitude to start challenging Mach 2, well, Mach 1 first. Let's challenge Mach 1 first. So throttle up again. And this time we punch right through it. But obviously it's important that we don't overperform as well. I don't want to have reduced the, tr the drag too much. As usual, there's the sort of sticky part, the draggy part of the flight regime. Once we get beyond 400 meters per second, it's a little bit better. So we'll go down a little bit to try and get through this. Now I haven't added this to my sort of official EDB mods pack. This will still be a standalone until I figure out more things with it. And I'll link it in the video description. Okay, I'll, I'll just have it go down a little bit. 
we would eventually creep up to the right velocity, but I want to expedite somewhat. High dynamic pressure is one thing it reads just fine. It is correct about that. Maybe I should start at a higher altitude or get to a higher altitude. It's getting a little bit low and we're not going to accelerate. Okay, here we go again past Mach 1, hopefully with better results this time. Okay, we're at 400 meters per second. I think it'll keep accelerating now if I level out. Yeah. Uh, so basically we had to go up to 11 kilometers and descend to 9 kilometers to get to accelerate past uh, 400 meters per second. But now we should be able to go the rest of the way to Mach 2. Staying level. As far as where we're at, we're a fair distance out from Cape Canaveral, as you can see there. Well, given the high dynamic pressure, we'll uh, start to climb here just to make it easier on the plane. It'll be more fuel efficient that way too, of course. Specific impulse on these engines is not great for uh, for a jet, but they were earlier engines, so not a big surprise. Okay, now at Mach 1.8. Mach 1.9, 15 minutes into the flight. We're back to nominal flight status at 14 kilometers, so that's when the high dynamic pressure goes off. And... Mach 2. We'll see what kind of throttle we need to maintain Mach 2. Pretty close to the top. In fact... Might as well just pour it on. <laughs> I mean, it's it's not gonna go too far beyond Mach 2. Let's see how it does on turning. Can we turn all the way around at speed? You have to be careful though. I mean, it still has plenty of drag from the look of it because if I deviate from the prograde vector, it sure does slow down. Like that, just a little bit even. No, well, I'm not performing the best turn ever. Yeah, we lost a lot of speed going around. But at least, uh... can still accelerate. So we're out here. And headed back to the Cape. Do we have enough fuel? No. Being high up means that we're more efficient than we were on the way up. And then of course we can throw all down as we descend. Well, we are once again past Mach 2, but predictably I'm in a worrying fuel condition. I'm always in a worrying fuel condition. Oh, and uh, at Mach 2.04 it seems like we get some engine temperature warnings. So, that seems like a valid reason to pull back here. Seems like in level flight we can manage this sort of throttle. We are currently here. Less than a Florida width away from Cape Canaveral. Well, let's see if <laughs> we completely throttle down. The drag is such that, um, yeah, the plane slows down rather quickly. It's not like I made it super powered or anything. In fact, even at this descent angle, it's still decreasing in speed, which is um, amazing, really. 
despite the sound, the engines are actually on idle. You can see kerosene is still being consumed. Okay, continuing to slow down and line up. I'm having trouble pulling up again. Has some interesting dynamics. I don't want the inside view, I want the locked view. I really don't want to go fast fast, I just want to make sure I have good control. Gear down. But yeah, I do recall it getting to a point where it didn't really want to let me pull up. So let's just not aim too far down initially. <laughs> uh, let's try and be mild about it. It's not like it's got small control surfaces, mind you. We're going way fast uh, compared to a normal plane, but let's just get it down safely this time. It certainly did not want me to pull up right there, so... <laughs> the s engine sound throws me off. It does. Okay, well, there we have it. So, it has been improved, let's face it. That's uh, what I was going for. We managed to land safely. Hopefully this is a better variation and meets with your approval. So, link will be in the video description. And with that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.